This is the Barbados Today Afternoon News for Thursday, August 3rd. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. The Barbados Road Safety Association is increasing calls for better service at the licensing authority. The association staged a protest outside of the authority's offices in the Pine St. Michael this morning, demanding reform of the driver's licensing system. President Charmaine Roland Bowen says the government entity needs to improve deficiencies in the assessment system. As I see it, it is uh, an injustice that is being done to all, all, all taxpayers, all world users, and we need to take a firm stand and let um, our message be strong that we no longer are going to be tolerating um, this type of treatment, that um, we have rights and we are going to exercise and use those rights. And whoever, whatever administration is willing, you know, to work with us, you know, to um, for the improvement and safety of of all world users, you know, we are willing to work with them, sit down and let us put our heads together and bring a closure to this, whereas we are moving forward, we want to move forward um, positively and, as I said, we want fairness and integrity and dignity. We want to um, have our dignity remain with us. Education Minister Ronald Jones says there has been no boycott of the school-based assessments this year despite objections from the teachers' unions. The Barbados Secondary Teachers' Union argues that correcting the SBAs is not part of the teachers' job description and they should therefore be compensated for marking the external exams. But Jones says despite the BSTU's position, nearly 100% of teachers employed by government have been grading this year's projects. 99% of teachers um, work with the students in the two years leading up to the SBA systematically. They correct the students' work and they are submitted on time. The samples thereof are submitted on time. So we don't have those issues. That 1% who've listened to the call of their union are the ones who create a little stress in the education environment. Um, but schools have been able to find either from other schools, teachers who are in the discipline, and um, some retired teachers who cannot understand why that 1% would hold out um, for payment um, for the, the children that I would have worked with over either a year or two years. Um, so you can say that We've been able to meet all of the corrections of the SBAs at both CAPE and CSEC level. The Frandall Stewart administration is being accused of violating its own rules relating to the retirement of public servants who were transferred to the Barbados Revenue Authority. Independent Senator Sir Roy Trotman leveled the charge yesterday in the Senate. He complained that many of those workers are being deprived of their full pensions because of the formula used to determine their compensation. Speaking during debate on the value-added tax amendment bill, Sir Roy said the policymakers were not to blame, and he called on Finance Minister Chris Sinclair to investigate the complaints in a bid to resolve the issue to the satisfaction of the retiring workers. One former trade union leader is branding as an unholy alliance, the recent partnership between the labor movement and private sector. He was referring to last week's march against austerity measures organized between the two sides. The veteran, who re preferred to remain anonymous, argued that businesses are merely seeking comfort within the trade union movement. According to him, no sector escaped this year's austerity measures, unlike 1991 when the economic crisis forced the retrenchment of 5,000 public sector workers. Prime Minister Frendel Stewart has agreed to meet with the Social Partnership next Friday to discuss the increased national social responsibility levy and other fiscal challenges. General Secretary of the National Union of Public Workers, Rosalind Smith, told Barbados today she is looking forward to the talks. Entrepreneurship is often touted as the way forward for the Caribbean, but one businesswoman says there needs to be a focus on changing the overall mindset of aspiring business people. Managing Director of the Caribbean Center of Excellence for Sustainable Livelihoods, Dr. Marsha Brandon, is concerned that this area is being ignored. 
it takes a long time and it all comes from culture and helping and that's why it's so hard people don't bother with it because well don't focus too much on it simply because we feel that if we teach everything else skills and everything else it affects the mindset but that's not necessarily true and we know that because there's there there has been a departure from certain values over the years um, certain cultural norms um, that that are positive to enhancing the growth of an individual. There's regional and international news after this short break. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event on Saturday, August 5th at 8 p.m. The Courtesy Garage Limited Mount Gay Pick of the Crop Finals will heat up as reigning monarch Aziza battles Colin Spencer, Donella, Adrian Clark, Crystal, Classic, Edwin, iWeb, Smokey Burke, Observer, and Sir Rule at the Kensington Noble 3W's Amphitheater. Early bird ground tickets, $45. Early bird 3W stand tickets, $60. Regular tickets are $55 for the ground and $75 for the 3W stand. Find out who will be the 2017 Calypso Monarch at the Courtesy Garage Limited Mount Gay Picket a Crop Finals in the Kensington Oval 3W's Amphitheater on August 5th at 8 p.m. Thank you for staying with us. We're back now with news from the region. Prison authorities in Guyana continue to grapple with unrest among inmates following last month's fire at the Camp Street Prison. Several inmates also recently escaped from the Lusignan Jail. And last weekend, in the latest disturbance, officers seized several improvised weapons. We get more in this report from HGP Nightly News. Quick thinking and vigilance by officers on the ground at the Lusignan Prison last Saturday quelled a series of disorderly conduct which could have resulted in another prison break. The prison service in a statement said it regrets the course of action but had no other option given the quote-unquote extreme disorder which broke out in the holding area and the refusal of the prisoners to heed to the commands of the officers to desist, end of quote. Director of Prisons Gladwin Samuels provided this update. He was hospitalized following the incident last um, Saturday. He is currently awaiting... Um, assessment by a specialist team at the hospital. From what was reported and my observation, he has a pitted lodge somewhere at the bottom of his left eye. Um, I was informed by the staff supervising him at the hospital that his behavior is very unbecoming um, to the medical staff and persons providing security to him. So hopefully the team was able to conduct the assessment today and they will determine uh, the way forward as it relates to removing the pitted. Mr. Samuels further said that of the 16 who were shot, one remains in hospital. And finally, on the international scene, U.S. President Donald Trump is blaming Congress for what he calls an all-time and very dangerous low in Washington's relationship with Russia. The criticism comes a day after he grudgingly signed into law sanctions against Moscow. Congress approved the sanctions last week, giving the president little choice but to sign the legislation. On Wednesday, Trump complained that the bill infringed on his presidential powers to shape foreign policy. The bill allows Congress to stop him from easing sanctions on Russia. And Moscow responded by saying the sanctions amounted to a full-scale trade war and ended hopes for better ties with the U.S. That takes us to the end of the news this afternoon. For more, you can visit our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Ayuzumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marikla Williams. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>